Hey everyone, welcome back. This video is intended to give you the base knowledge you need to start taking basic measurements with a multimeter as quickly and as safely as possible without needing any prior knowledge. Check out the description for a written version of this video and if you are the type to skip around, check out the chapters on the seek bar at the bottom of the video. Before we get too far into it, we need to know the anatomy of a multimeter. So here you see an LCD, a range switch, a second function switch, some multimeters don't have this, two, three, or four jacks for connecting your multimeter leads and the leads themselves. The leads themselves sometimes have dust covers on both ends which you're going to need to remove to take measurements, and sometimes at the probing end there'll be a little cap that is needed for high voltage safety, but as a beginner you should not be working with high voltage anyways, so you can either leave it on or remove it. As for which jack you're going to plug your leads into, well, I'll let you know before every single measurement, but in general, the black lead will go into the black jack labeled COM. The red lead, most of the time, will go into what I like to call the multifunction jack. That's the jack with all the labels, volts, ohms, etc. And just a quick safety warning before we get started, misuse of a multimeter can damage equipment, can damage the multimeter, or in very rare cases, maim or kill you but I am confident that if you can follow simple instructions and use a little common sense, you'll be 100% fine. That being said, let's get started. One of the most useful functions of a multimeter is the continuity setting. It tells you if a conductor, a circuit, or multiple parts of a circuit are connected to each other. It basically tells you if the conductor you have connected to the red probe is electrically connected to the conductor you have connected to the black probe. First, put your black lead into the black jack labeled COM. Next, put the red lead in the red multifunction jack labeled with the Greek letter omega. Omega is the symbol we use to represent ohms. Then, turn the range switch to the continuity function, which looks like a sideways Wi-Fi symbol. Keep in mind that sometimes you'll have to hit the second function or function button until the sideways Wi-Fi symbol appears on the screen. Without the probes touching, take note of what your screen reads. This is the reading you'll get if your conductor is not continuous, aka there is no continuity between the two probes. Then touch your probes together and see what your multimeter reads and what it does. Most of them have an audible sound. This tells you that there is continuity between the two probes. The last thing you need to know before you can go check continuity is that your circuit or your device must be unplugged or turned off in order to make your measurement. There is a very slim but real chance that you can damage your multimeter if your device is plugged in or active. Let's test it out. Is this switch on or off? Just place any lead on any side. Oh, no continuity there. Let's just flip the switch. Check again. Again, doesn't matter which lead goes where. This one definitely has continuity. That switch is on. How about this circuit board? Which one of the screws are connected to the others? Well, let's just test. These two are definitely connected, but not to that one and not to that one. How about this one up here? Definitely connected. Not connected, not connected. Also doesn't seem to be connected to any of these, but hey, it's connected to these. How about something more straightforward like this piece of wire? Should be continuity here, but there isn't. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, looks like someone was trying to fool us, but because we know how to use the multimeter, you can't fool us that easily. The next logical step after continuity is resistance measurements. Continuity tells you whether or not there's a connection between your two probes, and in a way, resistance gives you a way to quantify that connection. In short, it gives you a numerical value to the resistance that the flow of electricity will be impeded by. This number is expressed in ohms. Your leads go in the same position as the continuity mode. The black lead into the black com jack, and the red lead into the red jack with the omega symbol, which represents ohms. Then, turn the range switch to the omega symbol. Your multimeter may have a range of values for resistance. Don't sweat it, just select the range that is higher than what you expect to see. If you have no idea what to expect, just start at either end of the range while testing and work your way to the other end until you get a concrete measurement. As with continuity, your circuit must be isolated or disconnected from power before you test for resistance. Ideally, you would remove it from the circuit altogether. Let's test it out with a piece of wire. A short piece of wire like this will have nearly no resistance at all, so let's see if we can read that. Always when testing resistance, pay attention to the multiplier on the screen. It'll be important when we take the measurement. So just touch any lead to each end of the wire and take the reading. 
0 0.1 ohms is a tiny amount, and in fact, if we touch the two leads to each other, we can see that the leads themselves have 0 0.1 ohms of resistance. So this wire has a resistance that is immeasurable with a typical multimeter, and so it's good. Now let's measure this automotive bulb. Again, any lead to any side, and it looks like it's roughly 27.5 ohms. In a future video, I'll show you what to do with this reading. Another interesting experiment is to check your skin's resistance. All you have to do is pinch the metal ends of the leads. Looks like I have about 0.8 meg ohms of resistance or 800,000 ohms. This will change depending on how dry my skin is. The drier it is, the more resistance it'll have. Another great use for the resistance measurement is if you're colorblind and can't read the resistor color codes. You can simply objectively measure the resistance. Again, any lead to any side of the device and take your measurement. It looks like this brown, black, black, brown, brown resistor is a 1K resistor. And Googling a resistor color chart shows us that this is exactly what it is. Link in the description. Testing for voltage has many day-to-day -day uses, and so this measurement should be learned by everyone and not just hobbyists. It works by measuring the difference in voltage between the red and the black probe, giving you a numerical value that can either be positive or negative. Unlike the resistance and continuity settings, you must take this measurement while the circuit is plugged in or powered on, so you have to take precautions not to accidentally probe more than one spot with the same probe. Be careful not to short anything out. I also strongly recommend that beginners avoid circuits that plug directly into the wall, as some deadly voltages can be found in them. Just like on our previous measurements, the black lead goes into the black comm jack and the red lead goes into the red jack labeled V for volts. Turn the range switch to the V symbol, but be sure that you are on direct current. It's a symbol of a line with three dashes under it. Keep in mind that you might have to hit the second function button until that symbol appears on your screen depending on your multimeter. If your multimeter has a range of values in the DC volt position, set your meter to the value that is higher than what you expect to see. And if you're unsure what you're expecting to see, just start at one end of the range and then work your way up until you get a concrete value. But as a beginner, you probably shouldn't be testing high voltage anyways, so start low. Let's put it into practice with this 9 volt battery. With our multimeter in the volts range, we can put the red probe where we think the positive is and the black probe where we think the negative is. Notice the reading is negative. That just means that we have our probes on the wrong way. The voltage reading is still accurate, but if we swap our probes, there we go. There is 5 volts left in this 9 volt battery. It's pretty much dead. Let's check the voltage on this circuit board. This is a board that I designed to output multiple voltages, so it's perfect for this. We can see the voltage coming in is 12 volts. We can check these pads over at the end, and it outputs 3.3 volts. If we move down, these put out 5.2, these two pads put out 9.3, and these pads put out the incoming voltage. Don't forget that voltage measurements are relative meaning it's the voltage present at the red lead minus the voltage present at the black lead. Over at the red connection, we have plus 5 volts. Over at the black connection, we have 0 volts. Therefore, testing all these resistors in between gives us a figure in between 5 and 0 volts. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my video on this specific topic. The last measurement I will cover is current, the final measurement needed for Ohm's law. Measuring current is the most complicated for beginners because not only does the circuit have to be powered up and active, but you need to break open the circuit and insert your multimeter in series with the rest of it. Measuring current also requires the use of a new jack. The black lead will still go into the black comm jack, but the red lead will now go into the jack labeled A for amperes, which is the unit depicting current. If you have a very small current, you can use the milli or microamp jack, but if you don't know how much approximate current you expect, start with the 10 amp or just a jack. A current measurement can be positive or negative, but this only depicts the direction of the current flow. You can still trust the numbers to be reliable. Current jacks are usually protected by fuses, but not always. Refer to your user's manual. If your circuit works normally, but not when your meter is in series, try testing for continuity on your multimeter's fuse. One last thing. Be sure to remove the leads from the current jacks as soon as you're done measuring, or you may accidentally blow the fuse next time you go to check volts. So here we have a bulb lit up with an unknown voltage and an unknown current. And since I don't know what kind of current this thing is pulling, I have my red lead set into the 10 amp spot. Now to actually measure the current, all I have to do is break the circuit 
and insert my multimeter in series with the load. Looks like we have about 183 milliamps, that's 0 0.183 amps. And since I know the current is very small, I can get more resolution, aka more precision in this case, by moving the red lead onto the 400 milliamp jack and taking the measurement again. We get about 182 milliamps, and we even get a decimal point with an extra figure. Do you remember how I said you should take your leads out of your multimeter after you've done your current measurement? Well, let me show you why. Here I have a second multimeter, and I'm just going to check the resistance between the COM and the 10 amp port. 0 0.1 ohms is what I'm reading, and don't forget that 0 0.1 ohms is probably the resistance in the leads themselves. Let's check the milliamp range now. 1.8 ohms of resistance. So if you were to try to check voltage in this range, you would absolutely blow the fuse. And so that's it. The only thing left now is for you to grab your multimeter and go practice. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend beginners practice on stuff that is plugged into the wall, but everything else that's battery operated is fair game. Make sure to pay special attention when you're making current measurements because one mistake on a big enough battery will cost you a fuse and those fuses can be quite pricey. Some of them are over 20 bucks. If you don't already have a multimeter, check the video description where I have made a few recommendations. The Fluke 179 shown in this video is an excellent multimeter, but it is way overkill for a beginner. Make sure you're subscribed for a full video on what to look for when you're shopping for multimeters. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining Patreon. It's because of my Patreon patrons that I'm able to make this kind of content. Thanks for watching.